Right, with very great regret, I'm now going to wipe off my sieve of Eratosthenes. I'm sad to wipe it off because I think it's rather pretty, but we need to move on and do something else. And what we're going to do now is we're going to prove that there really is an infinite number of primes. How are we going to do it? Well, we obviously can't just sit down and write them all down because you can't write down an infinite number of things. And anyway, we know that the biggest prime number known to man is that one. So there is only a finite number of prime numbers known to man. So you might think, if there's only a finite number of prime numbers known to man, how can we possibly prove that there's an infinite number if we include the ones we don't know? It's a bit like saying there's an, only an, a finite number of species of animal known to man. But yet, could we somehow prove that an infinite number of different animals actually existed? Well, the thing is that numbers aren't like animals. That's one of the amazing things about numbers. You can kind of theorize things about them in a way that you can't do with animals. So here we are. We're going to prove this very important theorem. There is an infinite number of primes. And the way we're going to do it is by contradiction, which is a very useful way of proving things. What you do is you say, OK, well, don't know how I'm going to prove that, but let's just suppose that the opposite is true, or rather let's suppose that this thing is not true, and we're going to derive a contradiction from it. So we say, well, if this weren't true, something completely ridiculous would happen. So it must be true. This is a, a particularly interesting way of proving things in maths, because sometimes you sit down and go, OK, let's suppose that this thing isn't true and see if we can derive something ridiculous. And then sometimes it turns out that instead of deriving something ridiculous, you invent a whole new amazing branch of maths. And this is what happened with the famous parallel line postulate in Euclidean geometry. So there's this, this postulate that says, what does it say? Something like, parallel lines never meet, which seems really obvious, right? I mean, parallel lines never meet. That's what it means to be parallel. But then. They tried to see, they had all these axioms for geometry, and they tried to see if they could derive this one from the other ones. And so they tried to do it by contradiction. They said, okay, let's suppose it isn't true. Let's suppose that parallel lines do actually meet somewhere. And you might think they could derive something ridiculous, but they kept going and they kept going and they kept going. And what they actually did was that they found a whole new kind of geometry. And it turns out that there are different kinds of geometry, as if we didn't, if we didn't live in a a world where things work in our world, but there are things called, um, there's hyperbolic geometry, for example, where things are just a bit freaky. And so what they actually did when they tried to prove this by contradiction was discover this whole new kind of geometry. So this, either way, can be a very fruitful way of proving something. That was a massive digression. Oh, well, let's prove this by contradiction. So the prof, the proof, is by... contradiction. It's nice when you're writing a proof. It's nice to tell people what it is that you're you're going to do beforehand. It's not like telling a story where the story is more exciting if you don't tell people where you're going. I like to think of it as more of, of a journey where sometimes a journey is very exciting if you make it a huge surprise and you don't tell someone where you're going. But sometimes it's better to tell them where you're going so that, that they can, you know, bring their passport if they need to and things like that. Right, okay, proof by contradiction. So what do we do? We start by supposing the opposite is to, that, that this isn't true. So we suppose there's only a finite number of primes. There is only a finite number of primes. And if there's a finite number of them, we can just write them all down in a row, right? So supposing that these prime numbers are called P1, P2, P3, all the way up to Pn. And that's it. Okay? So those are all the prime numbers. In that case, what I'm going to do is go, I'm going to produce another number. Okay? Let A equal, I'm just going to multiply all these numbers together and add 1. Let A equals P1 times P2 times P3 
times Pn. So that's the product of all the primes. And I'm going to add 1. Okay? Now, the basic argument goes like this. A is clearly not any of these prime numbers already because it's bigger than all of them because I've multiplied them all together and I've added 1. Now, is it divisible by any of these prime numbers? Well, it's not divisible by P1, right? Because uh, if I try to divide it by P1, I'd get 1 left over at the end. And the same with all of them. If I try to divide it by any of these, I'd get 1 left over at the end. So it isn't divisible by any of these numbers. So in that case, A is only divisible by 1 and uh, none of those prime numbers, right? And yet, we know that every number can be written as a product of primes. Bah! Okay, let me try that again. Let A, I didn't say that right at all, let A be the product of all these primes plus 1. Okay, so we know that it's not divisible by any of these primes already. So now we've got to find ourselves a contradiction, which I was just about to do completely wrong. So let me try this again. What we say is that we know that A has a prime factor. It must have a prime factor. Um, so we know that A has a prime factor. Let P be prime Uh, perhaps we should have a discussion later about why that's really true. So P is a prime factor of A. Now we know that this P here can't be any of these because they don't divide A. Well, so we found a prime number that isn't any of the ones in the list that we already wrote down. So that's a contradiction. But P can't be any of P1 up to Pn since none of these divides A. So that's a contradiction. So we can write this big hash sign to show it's a contradiction. And we can conclude that this thing we supposed isn't true. Therefore, there really is an infinite number of primes. Yes. An infinite number of primes. So see if you can just think for a second and convince yourself that any number has to have at least one prime factor. <laughs>